Okay, Shanani, they've just announced the lockdown, so you need to come home, okay? It, it's not safe at your mother's house. You said so yourself. Because however much we disagree on this, this thing, Amma is not going to make you feel any better, is she? Your meds will spike. I mean, she, she's be, she'll be breathing down your neck every minute, poisoning your mind against me, reminding you how traumatic it was for her that you married a white guy. If you had to marry a white man, why not a doctor or a banker? Why a zookeeper? Which is quite unfair, because that was, what, 15 years ago when I first arrived? I mean, you, you think David Attenborough didn't start out cleaning monkey poop too? Yeah, I mean, you think he hit puberty and instantly became... There are 260 species of monkeys, the smallest of which is the pygmy marmoset. <laughs> right? I held Arming's hand as she died, okay? And then for you just to leave, just to walk out with a, you care more about animals than humans. Just because I said it might be better to get another dog instead of a baby. Also, I thought we agreed to discuss this only after you finished your MBA and, and got your vegan bistro come wholesale market going. So why all of a sudden, why now, Shona? Do you really think it's a good idea to put more of a strain on ourselves and not on the planet in the middle of a pandemic? I mean, when, when, when nature is asking us to back the hell off as a species. Look, I know you're upset, but please, baby, come home so we can talk things over calmly. Yeah? Boo Boo's gonna miss you so much. Right, Boo Boo? Boo Boo, come on. Hey? Hey, we miss Mama? Huh? <laughs> yeah, come on, up. Come on, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, you want one of Mama's massage carrot sticks? Oh, 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 So uh, I've gone back to my woodwork and uh, carpentry. Yeah, it helps to pass the hours at home. Still so many pieces left from Bucket Brown. Remember how we railed and screamed at the bulldozers? Such a happy, angry day. Anyway, um, I've made these his and hers stalls so we can eat out in the garden when you come back. So yours is the bigger one. Oh, no, not, not because you're, I, I wish you'd call, or at least message. At least, at least you know that I'm okay, that I'm safe and, <coughs> <coughs> oh, and healthy, right? I've tried calling a few times, but Amar won't let me speak to you. I've learned quite a few new Hindi swear words. <laughs> Please, a message will do anything that, even that smiley poop emoji that you love so much, eh? A smiley poop a day so I know that you're okay? <laughs> Yeah, at least um, I get to work on alternate, alternate days. I mean, someone has to feed the animals, right? I hope the world recognizes how essential zoo workers are. Of course, the, uh, the animals are like, lockdown, meh. <laughs> Strange going into an empty zoo. 
I miss the crowds, the tourists, and the sound of kids' laughter when you tell them turtles can breathe through their butts. <laughs> you were shocked the first time I told you that, remember? You said I was the one breathing out of my butt. Every time I see the baboons humping each other, I think of you. And, and me, I, I, I think of us. And, and why we're not spending this fragile and precious time together. What can I say, Han? I, I still think it would be irresponsible to add to the world's population and use up even more resources. Or maybe I'm not, maybe I need to stop thinking as a conservationist. Going to bed without you has been hard. Really hard. I miss your warmth and your amazing curves. Please, baby, a, a message or a, a picture. A, any body part will do. <laughs> Shoulder, elbow. Eh? Okay, Shanali. I've tried very hard, very, very hard not to message. I was thinking, okay, you wanna play tough. You think I can't handle this game, this, this game of blackmail by isolation. Well, two can play at this game. <laughs> Only it makes me angry. Oh, how angry it makes me. Yesterday, I, I totally lost it at brunch and I swept my plate off the table and then I, beat my chest and roared and I threw my phone on the ground and I was about to stomp on it like it was a little car when I realised this isn't your game. This isn't what my Shona would do to me. It's obviously a Mars game. So I'm not playing anymore. I'm back. I'm here. <laughs> and I have good news. Wonderful news, actually. Listen, hun, I've been reading a lot. Uh, between feedings at the zoo and watching the baboons bonking each other, I've been reading a lot. <laughs> and as it happens after the King Kong incident yesterday, I, I found this article in the Asian Journal of Science. Hold on. <laughs> and it totally blew my mind. What it says is this, this thing about population explosion being the root cause of ecological disaster. It's not true. Totally not true. It, 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 it's a neo-colonialist, a hippie Malthusian idea. I mean, of course, population is a factor, but it's not the root problem the eco-fascists make it out to be. And I know eco-fascist. What needs to happen is that rich countries should be giving more of their resources back to the poor countries of the global south, which is where most of those resources came from in the first place. I mean, duh. Why didn't I think of this before? I mean, we can't be sterilising ourselves as a species, can we? I mean, that would be utter madness. All of which is to say, I've made my peace with the science. And whatever happens post-pandemic, I'm ready. I'm ready to be a dad and have a baby with you. As long as we get rid of the air conditioning, all right? Okay? Okay.
So, you come home right now, and we'll get down. Hmm, <laughs> we'll get down, maybe. <laughs> Last night, I, I was so happy when I finished reading the article. I, I just started carving, carving, carving all night long. Now, we have this thing, this, this symbol of fertility. That I also imagine will be what our beautiful child will look like. Let's make sweet love, right? Actually, my friends say they can't wait for the COVID breaker to be over so that they can go out. But you know what? <laughs> I don't need to go out. I'm fine, really. Things are better now, not like when we first spoke. These days, the kids and I, we eat together. And uh, I want to show you something. Ah, they even have to make lunch. <laughs> Not bad, right? It was the first time. Uh, speaking of first times, I've been watching TV with the kids. Yeah, They introduced me to all the superhero movies. <laughs> Yesterday, we watched uh, Avengers Endgame. Have you watched that? It's quite sad, right? Iron Man gave up his life to save Spider-Man. Hmm. And last week, we watched Star Trek 1, 2, 3. In the past, I never liked what you call sci-fi movies. I couldn't tell, I couldn't understand what was going on. Who is good, who is bad. Everyone looked like a monster. But now I like them. It's fun to watch TV with the kids. Yeah. We watch sometimes till midnight. These days, I can sleep late. I can sleep anytime I want. No need to rush to Min's bedroom every time I hear the front door opening. Once I haven't even brushed my teeth, I heard him coming back. I quickly switch off the lights, pretend to sleep. If I didn't switch off the lights, he would still go find me. Until today, I, I don't think Min knows that she saved me. <laughs> Can't imagine what things would be like if he was still here now. Mm. Well, in the past, I could escape the house. I would leave before he woke. I told him I was sending the kids to school. Instead, I went to a nearby coffee shop until he left. I make sure that his car is gone before I go up. I remember a few times I couldn't find his car and I went home and he was still there. Anyway, it's not all bad. <laughs> Over the years, uh, I knew his timing. The earliest he came home was 10.30 so I could do anything I liked till then. Hmm. I even invited my friends home a few times for dinner. Yeah. I remember two years ago, I even had a small party. <laughs> but everyone was chit-chatting until 10.15. By 10.25, I was panicking. Had to rush them home. Sorry, sorry. No time to tapau. <sighs> it was quite funny, actually. In the end, he came back at 11. Didn't even know I had a party. <laughs> Uh, again? Mm, my only regret is I never hugged my children. For 10 years, I never hugged them. Now they're big already, not used to hugging. They probably think I don't like hugging. I wanted to, but I couldn't. 
if I hug them and not him, what would he say? He would get so angry. How can I tell him that I didn't want to touch him? And now the older one hugs her friends, not me. And I get jealous. Jealous they get her hugs. The middle boy doesn't hug anyone. And Min, my youngest, she says she wants to have a boyfriend because she wants hugs. Oh, it's better today. I still have headaches, yeah. Last night it was bad. My head felt it was going to burst. Don't know why. It's not like I work. That's why he used to say. I know, I know. It's been over for some time, but I still can't see him. Before the circuit breaker, I told you he would still come back to see the kids, to get his things. Lucky he texts the children first. I go to Min's room to hide. Even though it's more than a year, I still can't see him. Even when I see his texts, I'm... Anyway, I'm more relaxed these days. I want to say I'm more myself, but... I don't care about not going out. I'm, as long as there is this circuit breaker, what's good is that people can't come in. You see, I wanted to show you. I've been growing these. I'm happier now. The kids and I, we eat together. We watch TV together. We never used to do that when he was around. Everyone would be in their own rooms. Yeah, coming! Sorry, I hope you don't mind. Huh? My kids want to watch Spider-Man. <laughs> Which one? I think it's the latest, Far From Home. My daughter said I would like it. She said it's less biting. I was wondering, do I need another session? As long as there's lockdown, I don't think I need to see you. I'm fine, really. You know, my mother says that unmarried Indian women above the age of 35 are like expired peanut butter. Brown, hardened, dry. You can probably have it, but at your own risk. That gives me about eight months before I go bad. You see, I've, I've lived away from home long enough to ignore my parents, but not long enough to be able to say no to them. So when they said that they wanted to introduce me to someone, I had my initial protest, of course, because when Indian parents say that they want to introduce you to someone, to be clear, what they're saying is that they have found a willing supplier of semen for you to start production of their grandchildren in your uterine factory. How can I marry a nameless, faceless stranger? You know what my mother said? Rajiv is his name. You met him once, remember, at Reshma auntie's funeral when you were in secondary school with that Big hair and the pimples on your face and the umbrella sticking out of your school bag. <sighs> you can trust my mom to remind me of my lowest point of self-worth and death in the same sentence. This Rajiv guy in that case was just a bonus addition on things I want to permanently forget in my life. I can't begin to emphasize how this pandemic has saved me. I was supposed to fly to Boston to meet this Rajiv guy before the borders closed. Now, because of this pandemic, I didn't have to say no to my parents. The airlines did it for me. I know people are suffering, but I feel like I've been given a new lease of life. And it's not like I can't find men on my own. I go on dates, okay? I have a pretty decent record on coffee meets bagel. There are just less creeps there. But during these times, how do you find someone? Well, you don't. 
you just spend time with yourself you cook clean do yoga you start to read a lot more you start connecting with people you never knew about you start to read eyes you start to learn without judging you learn who's sad who's upset who's emotional who's numb the eyes are the, the window to your soul right someone told me before and now that we are all wearing masks i guess we are just automatically zooming into people's souls that's when i read his eyes that's when i had a sneak peek into his soul i didn't mean to i just wanted a bottle of avocado oil really and and it was a monday all the stock was gone apparently it's a rare product and and like a bad hollywood romcom we both just reached out for the same bottle of avocado oil initially he didn't say anything but then i could see with his eyes he said back off bitch can you imagine if that's the story i tell my kids some one day they're like how do, how did you and dad fall in love you're like we were reaching out for the same bottle of avocado oil and dad said back off bitch with his eyes did i just say kids oh i guess i was disarmed by his deceptively honest eyes but then again most psychopaths have those eyes you know anyway then he offered me the last pot of avocado oil and asked me for my number now here's where things got weird because i panicked and gave him my house number like my landline yeah who the hell does that because the thing is i don't know he could have been a psycho right because you can get mobile data personal data and stuff like that but now maybe it's worse because he can find out where i live but he lives in siglap and last i checked there are no psychopaths from siglap and uh, we've been talking every day on the phone at 9 o'clock sharp and it feels weirdly normal like it doesn't feel odd it feels okay it feels more than okay like you're finding this unexpected comfort in the stranger and there's something charming about sitting by the phone you don't know who's going to call you don't know if it's his phone call but anyway nobody else calls my landline and we're not doing any of that social media stuff huh? no zooming no facetime huh no video calling no whatsapp calls i haven't i haven't seen him i i don't even know his real name are we actually dating i guess i don't know what this is but we are connecting and there's no pressure there's no pressure to put on makeup or show cleavage or shave my legs i'm being with him in my most natural state and i guess emotionally we've been to places i never knew existed and i don't find that numbness in my eyes anymore but uh we have one condition that until this whole pandemic is over and the the restrictions have been lifted and we can meet without any conditions we're not going to see each other's faces yeah so all we've seen up eyes and that's how it's going to be for a while voices and eyes but every morning i wake up and i'm very excited because i can't wait to see the face of the man whom i'm falling in love with i think at some point i need to tell my parents about this 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 new man i've met that i've met my own nameless faceless stranger my very own hi <laughs> yeah no nothing i was just thinking of what to cook uh, yeah no was i waiting i was waiting <laughs> 
No, now I've got all this uh, leftover avocado oil, right? So what do you suggest I cook?